in a YouTube video earlier. Oh yeah? And I love this mask. It makes me look like the Lone Ranger. Well, I hope silver away! It does look pretty good, but why are you still wearing it? Because I look good in it. Hey, did you do something with the tables here? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Because we are going to start having children's church here Sunday mornings again for those Yay! kids that are allowed to come. Why would they not be allowed to come? Are they bad? No. Their parents are just being cautious and doing what they think is right. So we're going to continue to do these online classes for those kids that can't come to church yet. So I can keep coming early and getting snacks? Yes, you can keep coming. And yes, you can keep getting snacks, but let's be careful not to get greedy with them, okay, Michael? You and that greedy word. <laughs> yeah. So for our kids that can't make it in person on Sundays, let's do some review, okay? Yeah, let those kids answer. No, I think you're going to help us out. Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. So far, we have had two online children's church lessons. Our first lesson, if you remember, Michael. Was well, about Jesus. Yes, it was, as a matter of fact. Jesus cleansing the temple. Let's find out if you remember what we learned. What celebration was Jesus and his followers going to the temple for? Do you remember? Uh, Christmas. No. Couldn't have been Easter. No. Mm, I don't know. It was called the Passover. <gasps> Remember now? I do, Passover. All right. What was this celebration for? Um, we got passed over. Okay. Sort of. Uh, the Israelites, uh, yes. uh, let my people go. Uh, yes, that was part of the story. What were they supposed to be remembering during the Passover? Uh, that God spared them, the firstborn child. That's absolutely right. Good job, Michael. You were listening. The Israelites being led out of Egypt after all the plagues with the story of Moses and how the firstborn of Egypt was killed, but the Israelites that followed Moses' instructions did not lose their firstborn. So the death angel passed over their houses. When Jesus and his followers got to the temple, what was happening? A party. Um, there was money, and I remember there were animals in church. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah there in were the animals temple. in church. That was weird. Yeah. Um, uh, they were selling animals. Okay, so they were selling animals for sacrifices, right? And they were cheating people. Exactly. That's what I was looking for. Greedy money changers taking advantage of tired travelers. Oh, you and that greed again. That's right. Tired travelers and overcharging them. Very good, Michael. What did Jesus do because of this? He flipped the table over. <laughs> ah, he got angry, didn't he? And we call his anger righteous indignation. He knew the hearts of those men and their greed. Yes, there's that word again, Michael. They had turned God's house, the temple, into a den of thieves. He was angry because of the men's wrong intentions. He made them leave, and yes, he turned over their tables. Was Jesus right when he did this? Jesus is always right. Well, this is true. He was perfect. But we need to be careful when we become angry that our anger is also righteous, godly anger. 
Stop and think before we act on our anger. Ask ourselves, what would Jesus do before we do something? Then we have Jesus healing the nobleman's son. That was the next lesson. Do you remember anything about the nobleman from our story? Uh, he was noble. Okay, a little more please, Michael. He was a man. He was a man, that's not enough. Um, he wanted Jesus to heal his son. He did, that's a very important part of it. He was an officer in Herod, the king at the time's army. And his son was sick and dying, and no one could help him. So he had heard about Jesus and Jesus' miracles. So he went to find Jesus. What did the man do when he found Jesus, Michael? He said, hey, Jesus. Okay. He fell at his feet and begged Jesus to heal his son. He didn't just say, hi, Jesus. He was in a hurry. He was in a rush, wasn't he? Because his son was sick and he needed the help of Jesus. Did Jesus heal his son, Michael? Of course he did. He's Jesus. He did. Did Jesus need to go see his son to heal him? Mm, did he go no, to his son? No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't have to go. Did the nobleman believe Jesus had healed him even before he saw it? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 yes Michael, you were right the first time. Yes, he turned immediately and went home, expecting his son to be well when he got there. The nobleman's whole family after that believed in Jesus and accepted him as their savior because of this miracle. So those were our last two stories and we have a brand new story today, Michael. All right, new stories. That's yeah. why I'm here. Well, this this one nice. is Jesus Speaks at Nazareth. Okay, so Jesus is going back to the temple, okay? And he's gonna talk to the people again. Jesus was back in his hometown of Nazareth and he went, as usual, to the synagogue, to the temple, on Sabbath. Synagogue, Sabbath. So, Sabbath, synagogue. we have Jesus. And we have the scribes, the people that held the word of God. And there's no animals in there. And read. The word of God and Jesus was there and no all animals. these people Michael shh, listen this is not a time to answer any questions okay let's listen to the story he went as usual to the synagogue on Sabbath people had heard stories about Jesus's teaching and all of his miraculous miracles but they wanted to hear for themselves what Joseph's son would say Jesus stood up in the synagogue to read God's word. A helper handed him the book of Isaiah from a scroll to read. Jesus read, The Spirit of God has told me to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set free the captives, and to make the blind see. He closed the book and handed it back to the scribe and sat down. The people just stared at Jesus. They were amazed at the beautiful words he used. How can this be, they asked. Isn't he the carpenter's son? Proud men had heard about Jesus' miracles, but they didn't want to believe he was the savior of the world. Jesus was only a poor man. They expected the savior to be very rich and powerful. Jesus knew what was in their minds, what they were thinking. The people watched and waited. Then Jesus said these very shocking words. I am the one who is to preach the gospel to the poor and the captives and to heal and help as Isaiah promised. Jesus knew what the people were thinking and that they wouldn't believe in him. But he had no, had an answer.
answer for them. No prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Elijah helped the widow in the heathen land. God healed Naaman the heathen leper because he obeyed Elijah. When proud men who didn't believe Jesus listened to these words, they were very angry. Who does this man think he is, they began to proclaim. We know God isn't interested in anyone except the Jews. Let's do away with him. Then the men inside the temple grabbed Jesus and were forcing him out the door. Time to go. By now, a mob of people followed their leaders. They led Jesus to a high hill on which the city was built. Do you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to push him over the cliff and they wanted to kill him. But did Jesus let this happen? Absolutely not, because he was the son of God. He walked away from the crowd and disappeared. No one really knew where he went. Jesus was very sad and upset after this when he left Nazareth, his own people. They wouldn't even listen or believe him. How sad. And because they wouldn't believe, Jesus could not help them. So even though the people were amazed by Jesus, Michael, they were also upset by him. He did not speak like everybody else did. He was interested in helping all people, not just the Jewish people. When they tried to hurt him, they couldn't because it wasn't time for him to give his life yet. He had more work to do. What should we do when people won't accept the message of Jesus? What do you think, Michael? What should we do? Pray. Well, yeah, we should pray for those people, definitely, and pray that we have the right words. But what exactly do we have to do if they just turn away and don't want anything to do with the message of Jesus? I guess we just wait. Okay. So we walk away knowing when we leave, we tried, right? We did our best. And pray, like you said, for another chance to tell them again of Jesus' love and their need for him. So that was our story for this week, kids. I want to say thank you. Thanks to you too. I'll see you next week. And if you can make it to church Sunday morning, I look forward to seeing you. God bless. Hi, hope silver and away. Thanks.